Knowledge is not meant for everyone, but only for those who seek it. Those who say do not know. Those who know do not say. And that's the greatest miscarriage of information in the history of mankind. This has nothing to do with religion, but this has everything to do with the battle of good versus evil. When you die, and we will all die a mortal death, you'll be dead much longer than you'll ever have been alive. Do you believe your soul will live after your body? Do you believe in reincarnation? If this planet is ruled by evil for the next thousand years, and true evil reigns, why would you ever want to come back? What kind of robotic, non-organic, sterile, militant existence will you be coming back to? If the battle is even lost temporarily, you are condemning your own soul to come back in a body subject to satanic oppression and enslavement. If you are ever to fight for the will of God, then perhaps it's best to use this body and this life form that you have been granted to learn what you must do to ensure the perpetual existence of God and mankind. It truly does rest upon your shoulders. The battle of good versus evil is fought every day. You listen to the good angel on one shoulder or the evil angel on the other shoulder. You, through free will, choose to listen to one shoulder or the other. You decide who wins, good or evil. Lesson 1. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Lucifer is our enemy. God is Lucifer's enemy. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. My friend is God. Your friend is God. You are on God's side, and together you fight evil. You have a secret weapon, though. Hidden knowledge. Forgotten information. There is a reason Lucifer never wants his information known. Why? Because we can destroy Lucifer. Do you have a soul? Do you believe in souls? What about the battle of good versus evil? If you believe the teachings of most religions, then you understand how we should live and breathe for the good of God. But what exactly does living and breathing for our God mean in this day and age? How are we still relevant to God? Does God actually need us? You have purpose and meaning. Your soul matters. You matter. It's the single most important thing and the only reason any human being is upon this planet. You fulfill a very important function for God. We are all here to fulfill that soul purpose for which we were designed. We all have purpose to God. First, let's look at Lucifer's role in the heavens. You know, in addition to beating little puppies and kittens for fun, he actually has a legitimate job to do. Lucifer, also known as Satan, is a cherubim. Look in Ezekiel 28, 12 through 15. Lucifer is a protector of God. He performs a vital function, a purpose for God. You see, he prevents evil from ever getting to God. Lucifer cleanses the soul before it's even presented to God. Lucifer is a filter for evil. Cherubim, notably Lucifer, protect God from evil. No evil should ever touch God. And the cherubim are there to enforce that policy. They are, in fact, a filter to remove impurities of evil. Cherubim filter evil and prevent evil from entering the kingdom of heaven. Do not forget that each human soul is made of a tiny particle of God's soul. The master soul is fragmented in a sparkle you carry in your eye for as long as you're alive. Upon your death, you return that portion of the master soul having lived a full and wonderful life. Your birthright for being born on this planet is that sparkle of soul given to you by the one source God. That is why the eyes are truly the windows to the soul. The sparkle is the unmistakable sign that God is in each of us. While we experience all, every combination which life has to offer, we are able to perform that function for God. That's our purpose and our covenant. We offer to cleanse that tiny bit of God that we share with His eternal soul for the time that we're here on earth. We are to wash ourselves, cleanse ourselves with the water of this living planet, and we are to cleanse our soul with our tears. We are to experience, though, not ignore the event. To ignore means to be ignorant of purpose. To ignore an event is to deny an opportunity to show God that you would sacrifice your soul for Him. 
Remember what he did for you while he was Jesus and upon this water planet. He sacrificed his son for our sins. In acknowledgement, we help him cleanse his eternal soul. Each time you sacrifice your peace of mind and find good somewhere in it, then your part of filtering that experience has been done for God. So the experiment was set into motion, and it was decided to fragment a tiny portion of God's master soul to each human being born on planet Earth. Their sparkle of life or soul takes the experiences of each human existence and day-to-day -day life, all of it, good, bad, confusing, logical, orderly, chaos, and every combination of eventualities into consideration. And it is through free will that we are supposed to choose to rise above evil. We must experience it and, yes, even be tempted by it. Often we may immerse ourselves in it for a brief time to fully understand its implications. Once fully understood as humans with a portion of God's soul which we are to filter for Him, we are to choose to process the evil which we experience and find good in it, so that it cleanses our soul. It's in our daily shoulder battles and during that process of discovering good, and we must try so very hard to discover the path to good, no matter what we personally feel about the event. We must try to filter that evil and not be bitter by it, lest we become complicit in Lucifer's nefarious plan to short-circuit the filter for God. Lucifer wants humans to fail. Lucifer thinks it will weaken God just long enough to attack head-on. Devil wants to wager all the souls he bought over time and mix it with a weakened filtration system to see if his harebrained idea may work. It's only a small chance that it'll work, but how many human beings will be laid to waste to see if his plan might work? You see, the entire human experiment was envisioned as a way to filter evil to replace Lucifer. You see, Lucifer has demanded time off from his duties. Lucifer wants a vacation from filtering evil. And humans, we're the proposed solution. That is, if we succeed. If humans can filter evil as effectively as Lucifer, then God won't need Lucifer for a while. Remember, a heavenly day is like a thousand years of life on this earth. See, Lucifer wants a day off, not to be replaced by humans entirely. Lucifer is hoping anything will work, though. He's been at this game for a long time. Could you imagine for a moment? Wouldn't it be great to live without Satan or Lucifer for a few thousand years? Could you imagine for a moment if all humans were able to feel their special connection to God? Would the tide then turn this planet around to choose good instead of evil? We seem to succumb to evil's plot to wallow in evil events and traumatic catastrophes. God needs us to be strong for him. God needs us to filter that evil, both for our own individual souls and for him. When you die, your soul is returned to the master's soul, cleansed. If through your own free will you have made the right choices, that is. Having filtered evil and keeping evil from entering that master's soul, you will of course be returned to that master soul. To deny yourself the evil that we're supposed to process short circuits God's reason for our being here in the first place. It's our job to filter evil. It's what we do. How can you do that if you deny the experience altogether? Not playing the game does not make you a better Christian or a better soul to God. You are not performing your intended purpose by not participating. We are all returning our souls cleansed through our spiritual journeys in this body and in this life, aren't we? Well, aren't you? You aren't hung up on some evil event, are you? Could you put it behind you now, knowing that you did your job for the one Master, Father God, our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name? We lived and experienced as much evil as was, was available, and we chose through our own free will, not to go to the dark side. We denied evil, no matter how tempting or good it tastes. And please taste life. Getting out there and doing the hard work, as he asked of us, is our purpose. We must take the evil which happens to us and find the good in it and not be bitter. 
You've heard this all your life. And now you know the real reason why we must experience any evil at all. Know that you've always been working for God. You've always tried to use your powers for good and never evil. Because you've always known there's a reason. There's a reason you must experience pain in this life. Know that you have purpose. You felt that pain, that suffering, for God. And God will thank you when you get back home to Him. But for now, know that there is much more to life than you've ever considered. Let it sink into your soul that it's all real. Your soul belongs to God. What you do with it is up to your own free will. You decide, but know that it all really matters. Your soul is the only thing which you can freely sell, but that you never bought. And But never forget, the only buyer is Lucifer. Your soul is your birthright and your gift from God. One last thing, if Lucifer can buy your soul, it will never be reinserted to the master soul. Lucifer never gives back a purchased soul until that end match. Do well to protect your soul in this life form, in this body, and while you are here now. It does matter if you sell your soul. God does not need to bargain with you. God will freely give you what you ask for. If anyone is bargaining with you, be sure to recognize that that's Lucifer. Be certain that this is part of your test. And if we pass, so long Satan, hasta la bye-bye for a thousand years. Lucifer is testing you, not God. Lucifer, remember, he's trying to keep evil from ever returning to God's master soul. Lucifer will root out the evil within you so that you never return to God. That's his job. It's what he does. It's Lucifer's job to root you out here on planet Earth before you could ever get back to the Master Source Soul. Your soul is going to get dirty, ugly, stained, tarnished, but only if you're living for God. Only if you're living for God will you make those blemishes clean and beautiful things every time you find the good and evil which is presented to you to digest. And then you will have fulfilled your purpose on this planet. Only then will you have defeated evil in the grand scheme of things. Defeating evil and putting Lucifer out of a job for a few thousand years ensures your reincarnated soul or your everlasting soul when it rejoins the master soul, the single most desirable thing which every human wishes. Ask yourself, what do you really want? What's the single thing which every soul desires beyond all else? Peace.